You had Mark Jackson, and you transitioned to Steve Kerr. <clears throat> Talk about that. Mark, well, they're, they're very similar in the sense that they're super competitive, and they, they both obviously come from their playing backgrounds where they know what it's like to be a player. They know what, every, what you go through on a daily basis. They know how to communicate. They know, you know, just the, the little touch, you know, points that you need to have. Mm -hmm. um, haven't been in our shoes. Only a player would know. Only a player would know. Right. So, uh, the, the biggest difference is for Mark, we were young and we were unproven, and he had to create an identity. And create an edge for us that you know gave us the confidence to walk on the floor saying we can be any team any given night and he's an unbelievable motivator in terms of just the way that he can you know articulate himself and, and give you some some type of fuel on a nightly basis like he would come in, in the locker room uh, and he he wouldn't we talk about X's and game plans but then he spent like five minutes just talking about life mm -hmm. and like the perspective of you know how much you know what, what makes us all different while we're all in the locker room together what we about to go out here on the and he bring it around some like you know pretty funny serious sometimes story that just made you like your blood start boiling like all right oh we still, we got a game tonight too let's go <laughs> like let's go um and that for young guys like 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 we were at the time like we needed all that edge and that competitiveness and that and a guy that would go to war for you in the media and the locker room sometimes it was to a detriment a little bit up for upstairs like we were all just uh, we were just grinding, trying to get to that next level, and he helped us. Uh, mm -hmm. He helped us get there. Uh, there's obviously, I, there's no secret. I didn't want him fired when when it when it went down. And, right. Um, you know, with Bob Myers and, and Joe Leg and Peter Gruber, they wanted to make a decision, and and they brought in Steve. And, and my my whole point was like, if you fire Coach Kerr, I mean, fire uh, Coach Jackson. You just got to get the next hire right because we're in a position now where yeah, we can take that I'm next right job, here. Yeah. You can't mess it up and. And obviously they they got it right. You know, they Coach definitely Curry got it right. Is, is uh he's special, man. Like he's he's wise. You know, just in terms of you know how to how to manage people. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's a big thing in the league. No matter if it's mm. the first guy or the fifteenth guy, you got to be able to be honest, be able to set expectations, um, and figure out <clears throat> your ways to get the best out of out of guys. And I think anybody that would play for him would tell you, you always know like where you're at. Mm -hmm. Like you always know, you, if you if you get a couple of DMPs, he's gonna tell you why. He's gonna keep you engaged. He's not mm -hmm. just gonna walk by you and not say nothing. And we we've had experiences like mm -hmm. like that across the board. And I think that's the biggest thing for long term success. Like you know who your best players are. You know that they're gonna go out and do what they need to do every night. But you know the role players and the guys that are gonna help you throughout the regular season right. and have those spot moments during the playoffs. That's gonna make a difference. Like they gotta be engaged all year long. And it starts. In the summertime, the training camp, and all the way through, and coaches is, is the best at just being able to paint a picture of how you're going to help this team, and, and it, it, it being real, like you mm -hmm. feel that care factor that he that he brings, and uh, it's been an amazing journey. He's obviously had the best five year run of a, Ever. Of a coach, and he, he he's a great motivator too. I I won a championship with him when, this, when mm -hmm. I was with the Spurs, and I remember I used to come out the game a lot, you know, when Pop used to pull me for making the mistakes, and uh, I remember in the finals. You know, I didn't start. I didn't start Game Six off uh, well at all, and uh, Pop kept pulling me. But he he kept coming to me he's like, "You gonna make some big shots, I guarantee you." And he kept telling me that. And you know, I guess oh, Kerwood? Steve oh, Kerr. Steve Kerwood. And I, I wasn't. You know, I was in the funk, so I really wasn't hearing him. I ended up making three big threes in, game, <clears throat> in the championship game to win the championship. So he's one of them guys that he's so educated, so smart about the game that he can see shit that you don't even yeah, see. Hundred percent. And yeah. the cool thing about it too is he's had every seat. And almost in yes, in, in, and in, one in every seat, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you're talking about like Chicago to San Antonio, winning championships to, you know, being the GM of the Phoenix Suns, and, yeah. and uh, seeing what it's like to really manage a roster. And then you go, he's an analyst where he gets to just see the game and talk to people and just be connected in the league. Then he's a head coach, and it's like, um, and he, he he's got it. So this year is actually interesting because we obviously have a. You know, young team and trying to figure it out, and and it's testing him in different ways. That uh, over the last five years, he right. hasn't been testing and tested. And uh, I mean, he's handling it, man. It's, it's obviously our record is is not great, but um, all the young guys, when you ask them like, young how do you guys. like Coach Kerr? Like, yeah. and you hear what they have to say about him and how they make him feel, mm -hmm. like amidst the struggles that they're going through, it's uh, that that says that says a lot. He don't have a problem with the flower either. I don't think. 
No, nah, he's someone that yeah, enjoys I think, the yeah, I think, I think he, he enjoys don't. the Well, I remember when I was playing, he had the the spine stuff, right? Yeah. So I remember yeah, that's when he was kind of dabbling in the CBD space because it was sad. I remember because I was hurt in the playoffs too. He couldn't sit. Like if he could sit for two minutes, then he'd have to lay, then he'd have to walk mm. around, then he would try to sit. Like his pain was Damn. enormously through the roof. So it was one time. It's kind of awkward though because – head coach and player current since my last season you know not knowing but it was my last season I was just like you know do you do you smoke do you take CBD I mean I'm asking my coach that just because I'm seeing like the how uncomfortable and how how uh, how in pain he is and he you know I, I tried this and I tried that and it was it was just hard because he's such a good guy but he was really going through some shit with that yeah, uh, that yeah, spinal stuff he was going through it's crazy how long did it take for you guys to bond? You know what I mean? Like I said, you you were a big advocate for Mark Jackson. Mm -hmm. You didn't want him fired, but you were persistent on making sure it's the right hire. Once you kind of realized that he was the right hire, how long did it take you guys to bond? I said that first that first year, like leading up to to Christmas game, um, that's probably the point where I got comfortable understanding you know, how I was going to help or how I was going to take advantage of the system that he put in place because it was drastically different than, than, than Coach Jackson. So um, <laughs> we always laughed. He, you know, talking about ball movement, um, you know, player movement, you know, just making the right open pass, keep it, keep the ball moving. Something's going to something's gonna lead to a good shot at some point. Um, it, and we had certain, like, reads and calls, very similar to the Spurs uh, mm -hmm. system. Yep. And... He always say like you know this this is it's pretty intuitive what we're trying to do, uh, but you know we just got to get the fundamentals and the foundations of it for this year and then next year you know when we really got it and everybody understands where to be and when you know and the timing of everything like we really gonna take off. But it's like funny because that first year we won the, we won the championship, and every day it was about just keeping things simple, right? And as a point guard, that's. That's a, I love, love that. it because my game I try to keep things simple like take the first open shot. Your handles ain't simple. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Your handles are not simple. Beyond that, you know, <laughs> if it's if you open from thirty, shoot it. If yeah. not, move it. Get off. Get off the ball. Get out the way. Somebody else make a play. We obviously we're blessed with a lot of different playmakers. Mm -hmm. You know, you got myself, Sean, mm -hmm. Andre, Draymond mm -hmm. uh, from the top. We keep play. We had bigs that could pass with Bogut. Um, and all that, so like it, it worked because of our personnel. But that's just a fun way to play basketball, right. yep. um, and it's obviously proved success. But when you know, like everybody feels involved, and like they know who to get you the ball it. to if they need to. But, but they like, all touch. They all, all everybody touch touches. It. Everybody that's looking important. at the rim, being a threat. Don't nobody know who about to shoot. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And that's like, what makes you so dangerous. Yeah. Because everyone is one. Because I caught both ends of you guys. Obviously, kind of, we were, I wouldn't even say big brother, but kind of, you are our, the, the Lob City team yeah. was kind of your battle and your barometer from the, the the time we beat you guys until you guys went in the championship the next year. So mm -hmm. we saw the Mark Jackson building that foundation. And I'll be like, oh, these young motherfuckers are about to be <laughs> nice. And Draymond, because I remember we had CP and he was the guy. And Draymond's like, fuck that. I'm taking Steph Curry every single night. And he was doing some fucked up shit to our team, like stepping on Chris's shoe, making him fall, hitting jumpers. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He stepped yeah. on his shoe. <laughs> and then the one time in Golden State where you went in between our the whole that's, team that's, at the free throw, came out and turnaround shot. And then when Kurt was like, and <laughs> yeah, he yeah. made it, it was probably one of the most unbelievable shots. He, I don't even, you dribbled around, down, free throw line, back, turn around, fade, three pointer, like all kinds of crazy dribbling in between. And I was just like, this dude's a man. Like, Dude, you can't a, that do was a nothing crazy with time, him. Though. That was like, a dope that, series. That series was so much energy. But that's what? when we knew, like, I knew being a basketball mind, I was like, these motherfuckers got next, and it's going to be next for a minute. 